Have you wondered about living elsewhere after you retire? Well, we have, almost daily. As you know, it's not an overnight decision. Hi, this is Gil and Jean of Retire There, a podcast about places to consider living in after you retire. We started this show for selfish reasons. We planned on visiting cities earlier this year, spending some quality time not as tourists, but pretending to actually live there to get a real sense and taste of the place. We made one trip in February, which was great, and we were planning for the next trip. Then COVID hit. Yeah. A little background about us. I was born in Brazil, South America, from an Asian family, and grew up in Brooklyn, New York. I'm a college attorney who loves her job working with students, faculty, and staff. I was born and raised in Long Island, New York, and I'm a law librarian working in a court who also loves his job. We lived in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, New York for many years and have been thinking about our future home. So we will be speaking to folks from around the country who have moved to venues of their dreams and more, and we will share their intimate secrets. What? Just kidding. But we'll offer information you may not find anywhere else. So stay tuned. Welcome to Retire There. This is our first podcast. Hooray. (laughs) You don't sound very excited, Gene. Well, I am. (laughs) Okay. It was your idea. (laughs) So it's October 10, 2020. 10, 10, 2020. How cool is that? We are thrilled to introduce you to our first guest, Ed Bruno, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, a fellow Flatbush native. All right. For some of you who may not know where Flatbush is, it's like the coolest place on earth Uh, because, you know, I was there, too, who, after a couple of stops, made Glen Allen, Virginia, a suburb of Richmond, his and his wife, Jones, home. Hi, Ed. Welcome to our very first show. All right. No pressure. All right. It's just that our future depends on you. (laughs) <laughs> okay, it's in your hands, Ed. So don't mess up. So would you share with our audience how you and Joan landed in Glen Allen? But um, first, tell us a little bit about yourself. You would like our audience to know. Okay. Hello, and <laughs> it's nice to be your first guest. Well, I grew up in Brooklyn, as you said. Lived in Flatbush and Bay Ridge, and later moved to Staten Island. I'm a product of Catholic school education. Went to Brooklyn College, uh, went to City University, graduated, uh, worked in uh, as an engineer for 20 years, and then went to work for the city of New York. Uh, I've had some interesting life experiences. While I was in college, I worked for the New York City Transit Authority. I worked there about three and a half years, and I had enough experiences there to maybe equivalent to 20 years of work. Very interesting <laughs> job. This so you're a, you a subway clerk? Subway clerk in the token booth, although I didn't like the token booth. So I took um, these odd jobs, what they call the lunch relief. You went from token booth to token booth, made deliveries and brought tokens from one booth to another, or, or uh, different odd jobs were involved in it. You couldn't give people lunch at the beginning of their shift. So the first couple hours <laughs> would do odd jobs. And then of course, at the end, towards the end of the shift, you'd find other t- jobs waiting for you. For why people, why for... can't you feed them at the beginning of their uh, <laughs> shift? Well, if you start at say eight in the morning, you don't want to have lunch at eight 30. Oh, okay. For people who don't know, working in the subway in the seventies could be a very dangerous job. Well, that's, Probably, I mean, I I was going to school, but I knew I didn't really consider it uh, a career at the time. But I probably would have stayed if it wasn't so dangerous. And I I did enjoy working there. Didn't like to ride the subways as most strap hangers, but I enjoyed working there. Believe it or not, although it could be challenging. <laughs> um, let me just interrupt a second for those of you listening to us who are not familiar with what a token is, it's a coin that you use to put into the uh, the slot that allows you to get on to the subway. Okay, I don't mean to insult anyone, but, you know, nowadays everyone's using their, their smartphones. Okay, Ed, please continue. And um, after uh, my career, 
uh, as an engineer, I went to work for the city of New York. And uh, that job I really did enjoy. I had a really good crew to work with, and we had a lot of fun, but we did a lot of serious work. Maybe the work that you would realize the most was the building of the 311 system. Uh, we were responsible for a lot of the hardware for it. It was a big project. Mayor Bloomberg wanted to have, he believed in e-government, where you know you could have transparency, I guess, for all the city agencies to know what was going on. And he wanted that built pretty fast. And of course, uh, one of the problems too, when I first started there was uh, 9-11 which was um, a difficult time, to say the least. We basically had to rebuild all our computer systems. It wasn't easy. Yeah, I can imagine. And uh, I retired happily <laughs> and uh, started searching around for a place to live. Okay. And what, what did you look at when you looked for a place to live? Was it just Glen Allen? <laughs> did you look at other no, cities? No. Uh, my idea was that you know, maybe I'd move someplace where the weather was a little nicer, uh, someplace where it's less expensive to live. So that kind of rules out probably a lot of the Northeast. <laughs> uh, I didn't really want to go to the West Coast. So the eastern half of the U.S. was my first choice. I started looking at uh, some cities that were, you know, rated livable. The first one that jumped out to me that seemed to meet my criteria was Asheville, North Carolina. And we went and stayed there for about a week or and a half. And I really did like the city, but my wife did it. <laughs> so, of course, when you're looking for a place to live, if you're married, you want to make your spouse happy <laughs> as well. <laughs> well. Why didn't she like it? So many people seem to love Asheville. I, you know, it, it, she just she thought it was OK. But for some reason, she wasn't really, I don't know, maybe we needed more time there. She wasn't thrilled about it. Um, at that time, my daughter was living in North Carolina. Uh, she had lived in uh, a small town and then moved into Asheville. And we said, oh, this is a perfect time to go down there and, and look at it. And my daughter liked Asheville. Uh, but um, it wasn't too big. So we made some other trips. Um, when we drove down to Asheville, one of the things um, that was nice was the Shenandoah Valley going down Route or Interstate 81. And I said, well, maybe one of the cities in the Shenandoah and uh, Roanoke being another city. And I went to look at Roanoke. It was nice also, but we were both kind of agreed it might have been a little less of a city than what we wanted. We weren't sure about that. We had some friends in the meantime who had moved to Glen Allen. And I said, Glen Allen? I never heard of Glen Allen. <laughs> and uh, I did some research, and it was, the, I think, the 93rd best place in the U.S. to live in. Wow. <laughs> That's so great. So, um we came to visit our friends, and Joan, my wife, loved it. She says, I like it here. Let's move there. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think um, made her react that way? Was there anything during your visit that kind of jumped out? We live in a suburb, basically. And we're about, <clears throat> oh, from the edge of the city, 15 minutes. From downtown, uh, 25 minutes or so. So you can, with no traffic, you can make it in 20 minutes. And there's not really a lot of traffic, but there's enough that, you know, to slow you up a little bit. Not anything akin to New York. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can, right? <laughs> we say it's not a rush hour here. It's a rush half hour. <laughs> <laughs> One thing, too, that we liked, uh, Richmond and the surroundings, it's very green here. A lot of trees, a lot of People have a tendency here to uh, want to keep all the green space. Oh, wow. Oh, that's nice. That's so a... if you drive around Richmond, you'll notice it has a lot of trees. <laughs> I don't know if that's good, but I like it. <laughs> so you mentioned you mentioned the weather was um, one feature you were looking for, a warmer weather. Is it that much warmer? It, 
I think, you know, I grew up in New York and I never lived outside of New York. So I have to, that's a disclaimer. But one thing moving here, what I've noticed, you know, everybody said, oh, it gets really hot there in the summer. And it does. It gets hotter than New York temperature wise, but it doesn't seem as hot. Um, it's, it gets hot and humid. But in New York, where on a hot and really humid week, let's say you had a little heat wave, you come out of your house and it's it could be overwhelming you know, with the heat, humidity, the heat rising from the sidewalk and the buildings. doesn't seem like there's a breath of fresh air. Here, it's not like that. Every morning is nice. There might have been one or two mornings where it was really hot and sticky where you, oh, let's run back in the house. But the mornings are nice. The afternoons can be hot. Uh, as far as the winter time, from my from my point of view, it just doesn't get that cold. Now it can get very cold at night, uh, but it seems I can't remember more than one or two days since I've been living here where it didn't reach uh, at least 32 degrees. So it always gets above freezing every day. Mm-hmm. How often does it snow? Last year, it's uh, we did, we have one dusting of snow. Two years before that, we had like four or five inches of snow. But I noticed that nobody seems to shovel. <laughs> I mean, well, it's snow. We got to do something about it. But it's gone in a few days because it always gets above freezing. The funny part of that is when it does snow, everything closes down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Usually, what do you mean everything uh, closes down? Any type of plans they have. People <laughs> do not drive here in the snow. Um, how is that even possible? How do people get to work then? No, people, well, <laughs> most businesses reschedule. If it's uh, a store, you can expect that you're going to get there. There's, there's going to be maybe a few workers, but there'll be hardly anybody shopping. Wow, this that, sounds ideal. That's when Go would be there. Yeah. <laughs> well, they do close school. <clears throat> we've we've been here, and we were amazed that schools would close. There was no snow on the ground, just a little frost. I, I can't exp- the, the streets were clear. There might have been icy spots, but the schools were closed. So they're pretty. Um, they, I think they don't want people on the roads if the streets are at all slippery. Okay. Can you tell us um, more about the downtown area? You said that, uh, is it walking distance? No. It, um, th- there are buses that go downtown. Downtown is about, um, with no traffic or, you know, depending where you're going, it, it can take between 20 and 30 minutes. Are you talking about downtown Richmond? Downtown Richmond. Oh, you're talking downtown Glen Allen? Is there a downtown Glen Allen? No, Glen Allen doesn't really exist. It's more of a <laughs> of a postal post office construction. It um, it's You're scaring narrow. me. So there's but no to say. Hey, we're in the town of Glen Allen. Nope. <laughs> there's no Main Street with a bunch of stores and everything. Uh, no, there are mostly um, uh, there's a few malls and you know strip malls and that kind of thing, but. Uh, no really downtown area where, you know, where you have a few streets uh, that have stores or have some kind of attraction. No, you have to go into Richmond for that. Okay. So when you first moved down there, um, did you guys kind of undergo, you know, a shock com- comparing to, you know, maybe, well, you actually were, you went from Brooklyn to Staten Island. So Staten Island's a little suburban-ish to Brooklyn. Yeah, but- I mean- if you're coming from like a, a a a really urban area like Brooklyn, even Staten Island, coming here is different. First off, you have to be able to drive. I think you can you get around. Of course, you know there's Uber, there's there's a bus. But for instance, the bus is about a bus stop is two mile walk. <laughs> so I don't know if you'd <laughs> want to do that. They'll go and. Uh, There's ride sharing, people who don't want to drive to work. Uh, There's a park and ride, a couple of park and rides. So that's okay. You can get into work without having to go downtown and pay for parking. Ah. Okay. So you didn't take long to acclimate, you and Joan? 
Oh, no. I, I, we <laughs> liked it from the beginning. Okay. And does she drive as well? Oh, yeah. Okay. So do you think, like, it would be a two-car uh, situation? Because, like, when I go out, I may be gone for the day, and Jean would be <laughs> stuck here. Well, um, we do have two cars. Ah. Can we <laughs> get by with one? Sure. We have friends who... Uh, uh, retired couples who have one car down here, and they get around fine. Okay. And and what kind, what type of place did you move into? So did you buy a house, and is it in a community where they have a pool and things like that? So what I found out here, and, and talking to other people, a lot of the suburbs have HOAs, homeowners associations, <laughs> and they keep the grounds up and they maintain. To, uh, or require people to maintain their homes. But that may include a, a pool or a community center, which we have here. I mean, it's nice, mm -hmm. It's but it's very suburban. Uh, you're not going to walk down to the corner and get a newspaper and a cup of coffee. <laughs> so that would be tough for you, Gene. Cause, that would uh, be very tough We, we can't yeah. actually, where we live in Brooklyn, can't walk um, up oh, the we, block. We can. It's just far. We live in a dead end. and it's. See, I'm lazy, so... Well, one of the things, too, is here, and I suspect in a lot of, a lot of southern, southern cities, they are, you know, car-centric because they understand that most people get around with cars. So there's always parking, 90%, uh, maybe higher, of parking is free on the street, even in Richmond. And in New York, if, if I had worked here, I can remember parking, like in walking like a mile to my job because I had either cheaper parking or free parking. <laughs> oh, that's that. You know, that's sure, a good sure, point. Sure. That's a great point. Sure. I have a question that, that I can't believe Gil hasn't asked yet. Is there a Trader Joe's near your house? Oh yeah. <gasps> <laughs> there is? That how far? Sure. Oh, well, I think that's <laughs> one reason Joan liked living here. <laughs> she went shopping with our friend, his uh, friend's wife. And the shopping here, I mean, of course, this is pre-COVID, is phenomenal. Uh, <laughs> for instance, I know in Bay Ridge, how many large supermarkets are there? Maybe three or four? Oh, my God, now? When you say large, there are no <laughs> no large uh, suburban-type supermarkets. They're not no, that I large. I understand that, but I mean, a supermarket... We, you know, they'd have a complete range of products, you know, I'd like um, like a Trader Joe's. About four. Four. And I, don't, I forget how many people live in that immediate area. But <laughs> here, within uh, four miles of our house, we have 12 large supermarkets. No. Twelve. Twelve? Yes. How many people does well, that serve? I don't understand how they all Survive. manage to stay in business, but they are. And they're still open, to your knowledge? Yes. Oh, my God. Twelve. Well, they probably did well during COVID. Right. That's when they did it well. But um, Trader Joe's, I, I happen to love because it's very <laughs> unique. And, no, it's very affordable. So that yeah. is actually on my criteria list. Um, what about what about uh, airports? Uh, if we, you wanted to go Richmond, to... Yeah. Richmond has an international airport, which means you can fly anywhere in the world if you're, you know... A, of course, you have to make connecting flights, <laughs> but they call it international. But I, I guess you could almost say that about any city if you're willing to make connections. They probably go directly to Canada. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's it, how they get international. There might be some, maybe once. I, I really can't answer it 100. percent I've never flown out of uh, Richmond. My wife has a few times, so you can get direct flights. I'm sure, maybe one a week or. To a week to like Europe or something. I'm not exactly sure. So but it's um, considered an international airport. <laughs> yeah. So how far? Uh, how long is that drive from your house to um, Richmond International? Um, it's on the other side of the city, so uh, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, maybe. Oh, that's not bad. But oh no, no, and it's never. Any I've been to the airport, you know, to pick up people and drop people off. There's never a traffic jam. Wow, and you can pull right up to the terminal. Nobody's chasing you away. 
um, yeah. So you're saying that, um, cause that's also on my criteria within 30 minutes of our home, having an international airport. It, it's pretty extensive. I mean, it, it's all big carriers. It's not like these little small regional carriers mm-hmm. you never heard of. How far right. is the DC airport? Um, there's three airports, right? So the one closest to our house is probably about two hours, but DC is, it's like New York. You better, better leave extra time. <laughs> traffic can be a bear. It's, it's like, I'm sure like from, um, you know, going to say LaGuardia, you never know what kind of traffic you'll hit. True. Very true. <laughs> so you mentioned, um, you know, speaking of, um, cost and shopping, you mentioned that that's all there. Um, what about other things like healthcare? Is there, um, can you talk a little bit about that? After I moved down here, I started having a lot of problems with my uh, hips. And when it, in New York, I don't want to say it was misdiagnosed, but they, I, it seemed. <laughs> oh, God. That, you don't want to say that, huh? <laughs> well, I complained that it, my back hurt and my hips kind of hurt. Mm hmm. And they said, well, you have herniated discs and this and that. And they concentrated more on my back as a problem. Down here, when I went to see, uh, when I changed my doctor, of course, and he said, you know, we're going to have you checked out for uh, uh, orthopedically. Let's put it that way. And, this, and uh, he said, you have bad hips, Mr. Bruno. In fact, this one's really your left hip is bad, but your right hip is terrible. <laughs> so I've had both my hips replaced. Wow. And one of the things, and we've seen it with other friends who've retired to areas that are not near a big city, and they might have to drive three hours to get to a major hospital. Oh, my God. Wow. So that's another consideration. We have um, at least three, maybe Four major hospital groups here, schools of medicine. Uh, VCU has a school of medicine, Virginia Commonwealth Human University. So there's plenty of medical uh, facilities here and state of the art. Great, great, because that is so key. That's great. It, it is. Let's move, on to, let's move on to entertainment. What do you do for entertainment? Is there a lot in Richmond? Well, right now, nothing, <laughs> except, except stream TV. Well, <laughs> Richmond, maybe because it's the state capital, has, well, because it was also the capital of the Confederacy, has a lot of history here, mm-hmm. uh, you know, mostly around, centered around Civil War. So there's a few Civil War museums. There's also a um, Two or three other museums that are more uh, what you would consider like uh, museum museums, um, a science museum, a fine arts museum. You don't lack for museums, let's put it that way. They always have uh, different um, different exhibits that you might be interested in. Like you know, I saw a Leonardo exhibit at the um, at the science museum. It may not have been up to the level of the uh, New York Museum, you know, Museum of Natural History, but it was very good and very well done. As far as other entertainment, uh, Richmond has its own symphony orchestra. There's plenty of musicians. There's plenty of venues. They have some really large theaters, sort of like the size of a Radio City Music Hall. Wow. Where New York might have five or six like that. We have one, basically. Uh, I mean, the colleges all have their own venues as well, you know, so it's the size of a college uh, auditorium, say, and hey, there's plenty of concerts. And what about, like, uh, if you wanted to take courses and stuff, what's oh, what's available? University of Richmond has a program called OSHA, O-S-H-E-R, which is a national program. So there's many other communities and colleges that have it. I can't really speak to them, but I can speak to the one at the University of Richmond. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, what does that stand for? O S H E R. I think it's the family that started the foundation. Uh, 
Oh, okay. okay. Because, <laughs> I thought know, it was an acronym. <laughs> the program is diverse enough and big enough that, you know, it, it needs, obviously needs financial support. So this foundation, I guess the, that's their mission. And it's courses that are uh, for seniors. And I think you have to be at least 50 or 55, I forget. And uh-huh. it, I'm getting near there, Gene. Getting near. <laughs> It's, um, the courses are really a lot of fun because it's very low key. There's no uh, pressure. You miss a class, nobody gets upset. Of course, they don't want you taking classes and not show up. That bumps, <laughs> that may bump somebody else out of the class. Is it expensive? Because you'll have instructors that are really well loved. And let's say there's room for 50 people. They might have 100 people trying to get in. Wow. What's the cost of that, like an annual? Ah, so a friend who was taking the classes, and I asked him about it, and I said, well, how much is it? You know, figuring college is expensive these, these days. And he said, $360. 360 that's not bad for a class. He goes, no, it's 360 for all the classes. What? <laughs> 360 a year. Wow. There's three semesters, and you can take as many as you want. Now, wow. you don't have to get the $360 package, <laughs> which allows you to take it, everything. You can do classes individually, and they're like $40 or $60, depending. Oh, but it sounds like so a it's deal. A program. It's a deal. I would definitely sign up for the year. It is. It is a deal. Now, as far as the um, the campus you're in the same classrooms as the as the regular students, university students. And so the facilities are phenomenal. Wow. You know, I guess it would be good at any college. The instructors, some of them are retired college professors, but the majority of the instructors are people who had a background in what they're giving or have a serious interest in it. And I can say I haven't had one really bad instructor. So, wow, that's nice. Uh, that's great. Yeah, it's a great program. Right now, of course, they're, they're not meeting in person. They're doing virtual classes. So are you taking those now? No. Okay. <laughs> I, I have a question. That's... I, I took I took some time off figuring that I, I'm sitting in front of a, a, a monitor or a TV or a screen computer screen too many hours a day so i'm i'm waiting uh coming up next semester okay and is joan also taking these courses yes okay Uh, which was upsetting because i was telling her i was getting straight a's in all my classes (laughs) and she found out there's no testing (laughs) (laughs) oh that's funny um I have a question about something near and dear to my heart, and that's uh, baseball. You have a minor league baseball team, which has one of my favorite nicknames. It's the Richmond Flying Squirrels. <laughs> oh, I, yes. Do you know much about squirrel. them? Have you ever I, gone to, to a game? You know, the Mets have Let's Go Mets. Yes. We have Go Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Have you gone to many games? Well, No. <laughs> The problem is Joan, Joan's not into it, and um, I want to go, but I I want to go to day games. I don't go at night anymore. Mm-hmm. I think that's something uh, I should mention right now. In New York, all the streets are lit. There's streetlights. Um, in Richmond proper, there are streetlights, but it's not like New York where you have, you know, so many buildings throwing off lights and stores yeah. and everything. And, and as you get older and you don't feel comfortable driving at night, that's a consideration. I don't think I could have stayed for the whole game, so we would try to go during the day. During the day. Okay, I, I can relate to Joan. I think Joan and I would be buddies um, <laughs> at this point. Well, and, and it's great that uh, you respect that. Yeah, I mean, I get to, I've, I've gone to uh, the University of Richmond games, which I enjoy. Basketball? Uh, baseball. Uh, I haven't been. I've only been to the baseball. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to go to football. I never made it. 
Yeah, that must be exciting. Yeah. yeah. College it football is. is always exciting. Is. I yeah. mean, they're not big, big time. Uh, down here, football is probably uh, the king of sports. They they cover high school football here more than they covered college football back in New York. Is that right? Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. College football is big, big, big time here. And so is high school football. I like that. You would like that, Gene. Yes. Yeah. What oh. about things like um, gyms or um, um, exercise and fitness and stuff like that? Well, uh, we have a YMCA, a big one. Wow. Uh, yeah. Everything's bigger. Everything's big, yeah. <laughs> well, With, everything I mean, has parking, too. That's... But I have a key question for a former New Yorker. Can you get a good slice of pizza there? No. <laughs> 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 well, I, I shouldn't say that. I mean, <laughs> say, for instance, uh, you live in uh, Brooklyn. So I think the way it works in Brooklyn, there might be one or two pizza joints you stay away from. No, they're, they're terrible. You don't want to go there. <laughs> but for the most part, you grab a slice of pizza and it's okay anywhere in Brooklyn. Yes. Here... It's just the opposite. There's one or two good places, <laughs> and the rest of them, they're okay. I mean, if you don't mind chain pizza, Domino's and Pizza Hut, Domino's. And oh. all those, uh, and you'll, you'll be okay. So, Ed, it sounds like there's an opportunity for um, an oven, uh, pizza oven. In, uh... <laughs> you would think so, but uh, <laughs> you know what I think it is, too? Um, pizza places can thrive in New York because there's a lot of street traffic. True. Here, not so much. You know, you have to be, it's not, you don't just grab a slice here. Right. Can you get a slice or is everything by the pie? Yes. No, you can get a slice. Okay. Can That's you get it. pizza delivery? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm not well, creating. I shouldn't, you know, there, there are definitely some good places that are okay. I really like. It's just not as, um, you're not going to go and, um, you know, get, uh, like, comfort food or pizza or something that easily. Not like New York. But maybe no place else is like New York. I don't – I really can't say. Yeah. <laughs> well, what about um, – you know, food's very important to me, and I think very important to Gene, although pizza is <laughs> his top choice, I guess. Um, what about other types of food? Would you say there's a diverse Everything palate? Everything is here. Okay. And I, I would say – now, if you want to talk about, I mean, I guess the most popular uh, Chinese, Italian, Greek, I guess, I, I'm, it's all here. Okay. Is it as good as New York? No, but there are restaurants that are that would be good in New York, so you won't miss it, it but you'll have limited. There's more, how can I say? Oh, it, it's more corporate types, you know, like yeah. chains. Okay. Like uh, Panda Express or, you know. Something like that for Chinese. <laughs> but that being said, there are good Chinese restaurants, no question. And it's good Italian restaurants. Okay. So if I want mom cooked um food, I'm gonna have to um I guess bring myself or my sisters or you know, my, <laughs> well, mom is somewhere else now, but uh. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, there's a little bit of difference with um how you eat here. Uh dinner is Probably the same lunch, breakfast. There are no, I call, when we were growing up, there was always a diner or, or I, what I would call, or people call a greasy spoon. <laughs> they'd have good coffee. The place might not be the neatest place in the world, but they'd have, you know, you could get a nice omelet or pancakes or stuff like that. Or worst came to worst, you get a, uh, you know, like a muffin, a toasted Corn muffin. Yum. Can't get that here. What do you, what do you mean? Corn muffin. What's that? <laughs> Are you kidding? That's Gil's favorite. You get muffins <laughs> and they usually bring it to you sliced but not toasted. So you have to ask for things. It's a little bit different. <laughs> what, 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 do you, what do you mean sliced? I don't want anyone touching my muffin. In New York, if you ask, you know, yeah, uh, let me get a toasty corn muffin, you know, nobody bats an eyelash. Yeah, they put it on Down the grill. Down here, they're looking at you like, if they even have corn muffin. 
they always have blueberry, it seems, and other flavors. <laughs> you know, banana, walnut, or something. But corn muffins are, at least around here, it's hard to come by. That's so interesting because we were recently driving, where were we, upstate or something, and all we saw were cornfields. I mean, there was like no end to oh, cornfields. There's plenty of corn here. I mean, oh. it, there's lots of farms. I mean, I, within walking distance of here, there's a, there's a couple of farms with uh, cornfields. Oh, okay. So maybe it's just a palate thing, you know? Pe- people just I, enjoy I, blueberry. I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with grits. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Because grits are big down here. Okay. That's not on my top of the list, but yeah. Well, Good to know. Joan, Joan loves grits, so she's yeah. happy. Yeah, Jean loves grits too. So are are you happy in um, Virginia, or is it uh, or is it just that your wife's happy and that makes you happy? Oh no, no, I, I like it. I mean, I, I think I like to think I can live anywhere, but uh, I do like it. I mean, obviously, when you move, you have to come to the understanding that you're not going to be with all your friends and relations and you have to take that into consideration. And well, of course now with COVID, nobody gets to see friends and family. It seems like, (laughs) so it's kind of like that. Now, luckily uh, we had some friends living here and then another couple that we're friends with moved down here after we moved. So we have, we have friends and we've made some friends. And do you think um, in terms of, um, the cost of living or just okay. in general? That was, yeah, there, there were some surprises. For instance, one of the things uh, with taxes. So you say, well, how are they for retirees? Well, the state of Virginia does give people a break on their uh, Social Security taxes. So your state income taxes are less because of that break. Uh, I mean, other states... Are even better. I mean, you could go to some states that there is no tax, right? No uh, income tax. As far as other taxes, like a sales tax, sales tax, they just raised it to 6%. It was uh, 5.3%, but they just raised it. So you say, well, it's still a lot better than New York. Uh, and they do provide very good services here. The roads are perfect uh, as far as ma- maintenance of Public infrastructure is very good, very good, much better than New York. But there's no transportation system. Uh, the schools are very good. People are happy with the schools. So how do you get you on the sales tax? Even though it's less, there's a service tax for when you have meals. And uh, I think in our, where we live, it's 4%. In Richmond, it's 5%. So when you do go out to eat, your taxes are going to be higher than they are in New York. That's something to bear in mind. So there's a service tax. Does that mean you don't tip? No, you still tip. Okay. So I, mean, <laughs> I, I think down here, because of that, people tend to tip a little less. I'm not sure. for mm-hmm. sure. I, that hasn't really changed my outlook on it because in general – it depending, of course, on the restaurant, entrees are, you know, a couple of dollars cheaper. So, mm-hmm. so it kind of, that kind of works out. You know, meals are a little less expensive, but the tax is a little higher. So property taxes are much lower, but they have something here called a, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Real estate taxes are lower here than in New York. But they have something here called a property tax, a real property tax, meaning that they tax your car. What? Which was, uh, yeah. So Surprise. two cars, two taxes. Yes. So <laughs> it's not as high as a real estate tax. It's in the hundreds of dollars instead of the thousands. But still, it's a tax. So if you have a bunch of cars, you're going to have to take that into consideration. And does uh, the car type matter, or is it just like a standard? It's based on uh, the, the value of the car. Whoa. So if you have an old clunker, you won't pay too much. So if I you guess... have a brand new Mercedes, you'll pay more. I, I guess I'm going to hold off on my their Porsche. The rationale is that, you know, we don't want to tax people in their homes. We'll subsidize it with taxing cars. 
What about the more essential, like food, groceries, and stuff like that? Is that about the same? Food, definitely cheaper. Uh, Oh, one thing, insurance is much cheaper. So your auto insurance is cheaper. Your homeowner's insurance is cheaper, for sure. Okay. All right. And um, food is uh, fresher here. So that's a consideration. If you go buy tomatoes and lettuce, it'll last longer. Is that because it's more organic? No, I think it's because we get it a couple days ahead of what New York would get. I would say on average, produce lasts at least three or four days longer here than in New York. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, you buy so much. and always the case, but most of it. No, that's good to know because, you know, we buy so much when we're in the in the market and uh, we try to shop when we're not hungry. Um, but you buy stuff and you wind up throwing it out. It's such a waste. When you're walking around talking to people in town, do they, does anybody know you're from New York by your accent? Oh, instantly. <laughs> people told me, uh, you know, from New York. Oh, you don't have a bad New York accent. <laughs> well, down here, everybody knows right away. Oh, that's so funny. Um, I have a stock answer for that. Oh, yeah? What is that? When they asked me, are you from New York? I said, well, you have a problem with that? <laughs> you go, Ed. You now, tell them. people... <laughs> okay, no, no, I do have a, a final question because we've taken up a lot of your time and this has been wonderful. Um, no, no, I, I'm not that busy. Good, good. Um, what would you say, what stands out? Is there a secret that you'd like to share with anyone that's unique about um, Glenn Allen? A secret? Or, um, or, or just maybe to you guys? Um, oh, maybe, maybe there isn't. Well, a secret, I mean... The thing is, when you shouldn't have used that phrase. You end up if you want to live in a suburban area. If you don't want to live in a city, you have to uh, learn a few things. You have to learn to be a little bit more tolerant of things you wouldn't see in the city. Here, it's more buggy. Uh oh, uh oh, that's okay. a problem. Is it, I mean, it's not. It's not. Actually, mosquitoes are not as bad here as in New York or Staten Island. Staten Island's terrible. <laughs> so, but, you know, it's going to be more nature. So you're going to see more bugs. Are there, you know, is it outrageously bad? No, it's not as, uh, not as bad as, uh, you know, you might think. But it, it's something that you have to think about. There's more little critters running around, uh, things like that. You know, more squirrels, more chipmunks, more. But I guess that's living outside of the city. So I think is the secret is not to get uh, upset about things that are different. Just go with it and you'll learn to like it. Okay, great, great. Well, we had an ant problem and that drove me insane. So we're going to have to really (laughs) think this through and see people like when you read, you know, Forbes or or other um, uh, periodicals that that tell you where to live, best places. They don't get into this. You know, they don't dig into the dirt, as we say. We have friends (laughs) who live in Florida and they have lizards. They have a lizard (laughs) problem. I heard about that. I don't consider that a problem. You don't? (laughs) You're insane. I love lizards. I mean, if you have like 10 geckos running around in the house. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, Ed, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm not into any of those things either. We had a frog come in our house. That (laughs) That would freak me out. (laughs) Although that would be cute. A little tiny thing, but still. Okay. We had a squirrel. (laughs) I'm trying to think of any, you know, I think the secret is here that you have to understand that it's going to be different. The people are going to be a little bit different. I, I'm lucky. I like all my neighbors. Um, everybody here, for the most part, is friendly. I would say, in general, people here are more polite. Certainly, driving is different here. People uh, don't tailgate. The people beep, you know, honking? Oh, no, not at all. Oh, that's not nice. At all. That's nice. I, I would say, when we went back to New York, say, to visit, We'd hear more car honks in one day than we'd hear in a year. (laughs) 
that, that I forgot about that. Yeah, that's a big, big, big difference. That's so funny. Nobody, nobody tailgates you if you fall asleep at a red light or you start. <laughs> nobody blows their horn at you. Oh my God. Uh, it, uh, people, if you people, now the one thing you have to be careful of is if you're driving in a parking lot, people here because everybody's so lets people. Let people cross because here pedestrians have the right of way as they do in New York. But here, they will let you walk. <laughs> so here, people will walk out in front of your car. Where in New York, they'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> On that you note, know, I, you have to get used to that. That you have to let people go because they're used to being able to walk out with no problem. Where in New York, you know, you'd be much more cautious. Yeah, yeah. Gene, do you have anything else? I think that's it. I just want to say that was great. We really appreciate you talking to us. And I uh, yeah. had a great time speaking to you. Okay, yeah. Ed. I know the subject. I know the <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And um, we'll talk soon, all right? Have a great okay. weekend. Okay, take care. Thank bye you bye. so much. Bye. We hope you enjoyed our show and will join us again. And if you know someone who relocated after retirement or before or during and wishes to share their story, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Our information will be in the show notes below. They include our email address, gg at retirethere.com. The two G's are for Gil and Jean. Our website is retirethere.com. And you can follow us on Twitter at retirethere underscore. Remember the underscore or you'll get us mixed up with someone else.